What's over there? <laughs> I don't even want to know. Kitty! Didn't really matter. It led to the same place here, didn't it? Done and done. <laughs> Not that I care. Well, there's a Miri. Well, it didn't turn out how a Miri wanted, but hey, it turned out okay in the long run. Mary's like, bro, where are you going? What is this? Light armor studded. Uh, plus three bonus to AC against shaken opponents. Heavy shield. Increases the wielder's speed by ten feet. You find the you find Gwart near Armog's tent. When he notices you, he raises his hand to greet you. He unties Amiri. The barbarian rises to her feet, rubbing her numb wrists and looking down in silence. Dugoth greets you with a curt nod. Greetings, Gwart. Uh, actually, I'm gonna ask Amiri if she's all right first. She silently shakes her head. What was... Was your riot a success? Yes and no. Armog is still alive. Mad or not, he's still one of the strongest fighters in all of Galarian. But that's not important right now. He abandoned his army in the middle of battle. No one here will recognize him as chieftain after that. Uh, appalling irresponsibility. Such a person cannot be trusted with an army. 
So Armog's on his own now? Not at all. There's still an entire army of our brothers and sisters back in Numeria, ready to obey his every word. They'd rather call us traitor than give up on their great Armog, once more leading them to glory. We could try appealing to their reason, but I fear this will end with the Tiger Lord splitting into two separate tribes. Where did he go? That's the creepy part. Our Armog spent a lot of time uh, searching for the tomb of the ancient Armog, uh, the hero of the past, whose incarnation he believes himself to be. I don't know if this is true, but I heard rumor that he had finally found it. He took a small squad with him. The sisters opened a portal for him, and that's the last we saw of him. I guess he's inside the tomb already, and what he's looking for there could make him terribly powerful. More powerful than any of us can imagine. Where is the tomb? Only Armog and the sisters know. We'll have to find it on our own. We have to stop him. Exactly. You should be able to do it, because we can no longer stay. We're entreating Numeria before another battle with the Brevins can start, so listen to me carefully. Find the tomb. Find Armog and kill him. If you don't, he'll be back soon enough with a new army, and then Restov will fail, not to mention your barony. Farewell, then. All I can do to stop Armog is, uh, I hope you can talk some sense into the tribesmen. Go, I'll catch up to you later. I must bury Nilak. And this useless piece of scrap, too. The Bahrain looks to the hilt of her broken sword in her hands. Go. Go, I said. I thought she said, I sad. <laughs> then I realized, like, right at the last second, that wasn't it. Well, that sucks. I am the sad. <laughs> Tis sad. Womp womp. Oh, man. We're running. Somehow Jubilus is leading the way as one of the slowest characters. Again. I don't really understand how that works, but whatever, it's fine. And Dog is in the rear. Wait, isn't, isn't the exit here? Wait. Oh. <laughs> I have to talk to Jamandi. <laughs> Whoops! Sorry. Hey, Kassil's alive! Hey, let's go! The barbarians have retreated. Congratulations, my friend. You've managed the best kind of victory. A bloodless one. I don't know, man. Kassil was dead for a while. You saved many lives today, Your Grace. I thank you on behalf of the entire army. A brilliant victory, Baron. I've no doubt that the noble house you will found will in time gain great glory, and bards will sing its praises in every tavern. Don't mention it. I simply perform my duty as your ally. An ally's duty is such a funny thing. One who seemed to be your ally just yesterday may easily refuse to honor such debts tomorrow. And sometimes allies can become enemies due to the tiniest of disagreements. Oh, why, why you sound like that, Sir Tova? Perhaps for those who consider honor to be an empty word, 
and confuse real nobility with the length of their family history. Some people are willing to bow before any scoundrel, so long as that scoundrel's lineage is long enough. But a person's actions are what show if someone is truly noble. The deeds of the Baron in his lands are already worthy of legend. He has proven he has the virtues necessary to be not just a Baron, but to be a true king. Things just keep becoming more interesting with you. So, near Rastov's border, where once only impenetrable woods, monster lairs, and bandit dens were found, a real kingdom is emerging? I confess you have surprised me. Well, I won't object. It will be entertaining to see how that turns out. I haven't the slightest doubt that this man will become one of the best kings the River Kingdoms have ever known. Interesting. I'm gonna shake Jermondi's hand. Being your ally is a great honor. Trust me when I say I won't forget what you've done. The feeling is mutual. And now, let me bid you farewell. I was truly happy to meet you face to face once more. With all my heart, I wish your young kingdom great prosperity, and I hope your newly established noble family will have a long and glorious history. Well, your highness, it's time to get ready for the coronation. You'll probably want to restore order within your lands first. As I'm sure you'll agree, it would certainly be odd to hold a celebration with monsters roaming the land and a crazed barbarian chieftain still at large. Once these issues are resolved, I'll be happy to see the region once known as the Stolen Lands become a full-fledged country, led by a truly noble sovereign. Till we meet again at your coronation. Can I leave now? Oh, it's up here. All right, let's get out of here. OK. 
Can I just go home, please? <laughs> You've been spotted by the enemies, you mu- <laughs> I was all like, do you want to avoid? I was like, yeah, try to avoid. And then you had no! And it was like, you've been spotted by the enemies. I was like, Cappy, come on! Making these enemies attack me. What are these elder air elementals? And it's spinny boys! Yeah, the worst fucking ones, man! Oh, grody. Okay. A fine use of my talents. Dog, go bite him in the butt. Bite that air. <laughs> Why did I only attack once? It said three. Stay behind me. Weird. from me. my breath no all right Lindsay waits in the castle
Wait, do I have to do Tenebrous Depths? I thought it was, like, optional. Ugh. It is optional. Why is it calling it a dark dream? That's what happened with that one guy at the river at the beginning of the game. Oh, a new chapter unlocks... Just every chapter unlocks new levels. Okay, okay. That's not so bad. I'll just ignore it. Alright. Sort for me, would you? Okay, that seems pretty reasonable. Okay. Are you selling anything good here? <laughs> no. Alright, we'll just get 50 grand right there, no problem. to build something in um this place Not any oh that's the stuff that's already there build goblin quarters could easily be mistaken for a garbage dump. Hospital. Somebody was saying I should build these mage towers. Because they give me, like, magical... I can teleport there. A lighthouse can be built in the blue spot. We'll stop there. We'll let that mage tower get built. Now I can teleport straight over to Varnhold. That'll be handy. How does that work? Do you just click on the town and it says, like, do you want to teleport here? Ugh. Time to get some rest, isn't it?
Probably have to build it in the capital, too, now that I think about it. Yeah, no, I understand. Thank you. Uh, enter. Mage Tower. Printing house is free. Oh, I thought I already had one. Affects a library. Put it there. Mansion. Put the library next door. How much do I have? You think, yeah. Put the library next door. Okay. Alright. So once those are built, I can teleport between my capital and Varnhold. That'll be nice. Attend the council. The council of what? Imagine that, king. You know, I always believed in you. You keep it up and who knows, in a couple of years you might even become an emperor. But that Armog, he had those creepy sisters barely managed to find the tomb. How are we going to find it? I mean, I suppose I have a bit of an idea, but I'm not sure. What's this idea of yours? We're not the first to live in the lands. Countless other people have been here before us. Maybe they knew something about the tomb. If we could find some archives from previous inhabitants of the stolen lands, like the dwarves maybe. Truth be told, I don't really know where to look for them, but uh, these lands are swarming with ruins. There must be some... There must be an archive or two left somewhere. I mean, maybe. I have scouts we can send to the Glenabon Uplands? Do I? They can scour out... They can scour out the location for us. We can ask the Tiger Lords. I think that's a dead end. I already chatted them up a bit, and I know, uh, and they know about the same as we do. The tomb is someone in the Glenabon Uplands. I have scouts we can send there? Seriously? You have your own scouts? Well, I don't know why I'm so surprised. You're going to be king. Fine. Uh, then let them search. I didn't know I had scouts. Apparently I do? Oh, uh, Lindsay waits in the castle. I did that. Make our Varn to the throne room. We had scouts this whole time? Yeah, why have I been running everywhere? Your Grace, I know I already owe you so much and you shouldn't bother and shouldn't bother you with any further requests. I would hold my tongue if my own interests were on the line. However, this matter I need help with involves the fate of my people and a certain person of special value to me. You see, when strange events start to occur in Varnhold and its environs, we started our own investigation. We discovered a certain mysterious dungeon. The locals say it was the tomb of an ancient creature of great power. Alas, this turned out to be a false lead, and the dungeon was a trap. Meanwhile, the real Vortikai continued to commit outrages in his real tier, tomb and then attacked Varnhold. As fate would have it, the moment of the magical attack on the town, a party of my people were inside the false dungeon and have yet to learn of their true fate. This is my request. Help me go down into the dungeon and find out what happened to my people. 
What is this person of special value? The woman who I hope to become my wife. She led the party that disappeared in the dungeon. Uh, my brilliant orders landed her in trouble, and I still don't even know what happened down there. Uh, I'll do what I can. Where is the dungeon? I'll mark it on your map. I will meet you on the road if you decide to go. Thanks. Alright, so we need to do that. Three days until you're done. Send your scouts. Okay. Gotcha. 250... Jesus Christ. Uh, I guess I could buy some BP again. Uh, 400 and... Let's do that. Alright. Success! The treasurer offered to generously reward anyone who turned into thieves. Informers found the sum tempting, and the thieves were quickly caught. Wait, did that get me 450 BP? Holy shit! Yeah, that's why we were negative. We had been robbed, yeah. A terrifying person is here, it says. Thorgrim, your subjects truly are savages. How... My, how the peasants hate paying their taxes. As if they preferred the stag lord's way. When we ran out of gold, he'd just kill everybody in the nearest village and pick the loot up from their corpses. But here you come with your monthly tax collection, and for them it's nothing less than a nightmare. However, your people won't get off so easily. Numbers of them join the tax masters following of Abadar. Uh, they regard avoidance of taxes as a major personal offense. These tax masters wear golden masks and go from door to door and beat the gold out of your people along with their teeth. It is indeed the civilized approach. <laughs> no, it is not. It may be the only way to bring some of civilization to the forsaken corner of the world. However, if you allow this to continue, it will surely be called a tyrant. I urge you to act carefully. Address the tax masters. And let them know that they have gone too far, but don't disband them altogether. Someone has to collect taxes, and there aren't very many people willing to take the job. Loyalty goes up, but economy and stability go down. Loyalty goes down, but economy and stability go up. Loyalty goes down by one, but economy and stability both go up by two that one. I hope you won't be troubled by a touch of hypocrisy. The peasants will hear you denounce the tax masters and that message will comfort them. In the meantime, the tax evaders will still be attended to during the night time, quietly and covertly. Seems reasonable. Still violent, but who the fuck is that? A dismal silence hangs in the hall as a figure... A new visitor appears at the door. He's taller than anyone else present. It seems to be made of subtle folds and sharp angles. From his metal mask to his scarlet cape. And he is literally reeks of evil, cold, calculating, unrelenting. The Forefather. Greetings to the ruler of this land. An expressive male voice carries across the hall. The visitor bows politely. I've come from afar to discuss a matter of considerable importance. And I hope for a civilized conversation. Let me introduce myself. I am called the Forefather, and I serve the illustrious Queen Mahathala. I am a devil. Fuck. What brings you here? I came simply to pay my regards to a lawful ruler. It is my manner to conduct myself in this way. 
The devil makes a few gestures and says something indistinguishable. Both he and you seem to be enclosed in an invisible ring. The outside world shines through dimly. Its sounds are barely audible. A modest precaution. Others should not hear what I have to say. I have news of someone you know, young Kanera and Kaliki. One of them is in great danger, and they both share a single fate. They must have told you by now of the Soul Eater who killed Kanera. I should imagine that by disclosing their secret and true names to you, the poor children deprived Kanera of protection from this deadly foe. The Soul Eater has picked up her scent and will soon be here. You will need my help to deal with it. What is your interest in the two girls? My interest in these lost children is special. I would say even familial. It's my blood that runs through their veins. A long, long time ago, I gave a night of passion to a young follower. Uh, her soul was writhed in anger, agony in the flames of hell for many ages, and yet I still feel a vague joy when I see the offspring of our alliance walking the sunlit lands. I am their forefather, and not only by name. What's so special about the Soul Eater? Soul Eater is more ancient and far stronger than any evil and any others like it. It knows Canera's name and it will follow her relentlessly. If you refuse my help, both you and the girls will have to remain on close guard day and night, waiting for it to appear, to attack. And believe me, even so, you will not be prepared when it strikes. What do you suggest? I can lure the Soul Eater to appear at the right time and place. I even know a way to be rid of it once and for all without any fuss. If you are willing, then come with Kaliki to the Barrens at the southern border of the Camelons. It must be Kaliki. We cannot risk her sister being found. We will meet there and resolve the matter once and for all. Fine. The devil makes another half bow. I enjoy dealing with reasonable and civilized mortals so long. Huh. So much to do. Feast for the Afflicted. Two hundred BP. All right, that's fine. Support the Treasurer's assistance. I would like to support the Divine. What is that? That's called rank up, right? Support the Curator. Support the Diplomat. Support the General. Support the Counselor. Art. I don't want to support any of those. I want to support the, uh, the High Priest.
Find the remaining ten shards. Okay, what is this? The Trailblazer's Helm. Okay, let me lock this on my screen here. You guys probably can't see this, can you? Let's do uh, that. There, now you can see it. Okay. Uh, ten shards and bring them to me. Forest Knight Bracers. All ten shards. Shards of the Ring of Reckless Courage. Twelve. Metal Shard Ring, twelve, yep. Yeah. Oak of Sold Souls. <laughs> Armor of the Saber Toothed Courage. Sixteen. Good lord. Let's go up here. Restore the Cloak of Cold Souls. He places the scraps of leather covered with an unrecognizable inscription before him. The story you want to learn is, te is truly terrible. Even more terrible could be the destiny of any person who dares wear this cloak, but as you wish. I will impart a remnant of my gift into the cloak, uh, so it will be able to recount to you the crimes of its creators. What's that app? It's in, this, it's in it's Steam Beta. This is built into Steam, but it's the beta version. Ancient scrap of script covered, covered leather. So, script covered leather is done. Okay. Let's do that now. Turn that off on my end. Okay. So I got a cloak. Fallen Warrior 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How many Fallen Warrior parts are there? It says five. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe I'll have to check that one again. Okay, what's this cloak I got? This cloak infix, uh, conflict, inflicts a minus four penalty to constitution. It adds plus two to the wearer caster's level when they cast a necromancy school or summoning subtype spell for the purpose of calculating all level variable effects of that spell. It also grants the wearer a bonus to plus two necromancy school spells. It grants the ability to cast vampiric touch three times per day with the uh, caster level equal to the character level. Unequipping the cloak is only possible after re casting remove curse spell on the wearer and passing a DC caster level check failing this check kills the wear immediately and summons a hostile thana demon if the wear has reached the 20th level it summons a hostile astral demon instead so anybody who wants to wear this needs to be able to to like rock necromancy but minus four constitution
Man, if you had a wizard that, and you like hard focused necromancy, that cloak would be amazing. You would just stack that and then wear like a plus six constitution belt to help compensate. Fallen warrior stuff. Hold on, let me let me put some of these things back. I know I don't have all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ring pieces. That's what I have written down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven helmet pieces. Uh, that's what I have written down. So let's drop the helmet and rings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight night bracers. Uh, that's what I've got written down. What is this? Rune covered scrap three. That's what I've written. A fallen warrior. I had written that there was only five, and then Talden horse stuff. Four out of five. Let's go check with him again. I brought some relics. Are any of them worth a story? Blind darkness underground. Bronze blades crash clashing. The cold blood of serpent poke folk and the hot blood of cyclops mingle on the floor. Something else. Fear, desperation, agonizing shame. The owner of these pieces was not to be in, uh, envied. Give me the items you collected and I'll tell you the story of the fallen soldier. Saddled horses neigh and stomp their hooves. They cannot wait to travel uh, to distant lands, searching for the legendary treasures of an ancient empire. I can feel the bravery of the previous owner, how she dreamt of adventure and fame. Do you wish to know where her path led her? I certainly. Find the rest of her five belongings, and together we can uncover the story of the Jesh of the search for the gemstone cave. That's the horse stuff. Tell me about the fallen soldier. Ten thousand dollars and eighteen hundred experience. Okay. I feel the damp cold of a dungeon. Weapons clinking. I smell blood and soldiers' foot cloth. Weird sentence. Hold on. Let me do this real quick. This is gonna bother me. Okay. There's a dull pain in my muscles and the weariness, and endless weariness on the verge of desperation. I'm a Cyclops, a soldier of the 19th Unbending Legion of the Golgon Empire. We travel the Dark Lands with the mission of clearing the middle levels of the southwest sector of Serpent, serpent Folk. Over the course of their mission, we lost a third of our contingent. Our rations run low and our morale lower. I heard several soldiers secretly telling each other that they've lost any hope of returning home, but I stand strong. I'll endure whatever I must to return home alive for the sake of my wife and child. But each new march, each new battle dims the thought that I'll ever see them again. I pray for the sun's protection and guidance, but I can grant Luminary... Can the great Luminary even hear me down here? Why do you wage war against the Serpent Folk? By the order of the Empress... Empress with our own hands, she destroyed the den near Groktar and beheaded their leader. The Dark Lands will soon be ours. Maybe once we've perched at a serpent folk, we can find our way to bring the sunlight down here. How long have you been on your mission? Cut off from the sun and the moon, we count time by daily marches, and I've lost track completely. It feels like we've spent an eternity in this underground hell. Could it be that when I return, my son will be a graying old man? With sons of his own, and then the sons themselves? No, I must avoid these venomous thoughts. You worship the sun? Yes, of course. Do you know what raises Cyclopses above the animals and the other two-legged savages? The Cyclops' face has one eye, a single orb, just like the sun in the sky during the day, or the moon at night. We build majestic temples to praise the luminaries, and in return they reward us with prophetic visions. The lesser races may roam in the dark, but the Cyclopses are capable of seeing the truth. Golgon. I thought the Cyclops Empire was called Corallon. Corallon? Never heard of it. 
Orlon was founded by Golgon several centuries later. As for why uh, there were refugees at all, well, we'll loon soon enough. Go on. Our mission continues. We've lost half our contingent, but we still have no orders to turn back. The soldiers' desperation is becoming open indignation. We were outside. Or if we were outside the situation, I'm convinced half the unit would have deserted by now. But here we are, and there's nowhere to run. I listen to the soldiers talking, and I don't like what I hear. This underground hell has changed them. They don't look to the luminaries for help anymore. Rumor has it that some of them have been secretly begun praying to the serpent folks' gods. Worse than barbarism. This is pure insanity. But what? But wasn't this mission itself insane, in hindsight? Do you kill many serpent folk? I think so? I don't know the exact number. That filth doesn't practice honest combat. They move through secret passages to ambush us, attacking us from behind or above or below. We've decimated many of their nests, but still we keep they keep coming. What brings what beings do the serpent folk worship? I don't know and I don't wish to. Who could possibly be worthy of worshipping in these fetid catacombs where sunlight can never reach? Devils or demons, if I had to guess. We've seen some of their unholy shrines, and they were enough to make us even the seasoned veterans sick. Blade skins, bowls of blood and entrails, altars made of bone, and this done to their own kin, to other serpent folk. I can't imagine what they do to their captives. The Legion rebelled. An officer caught some of the soldiers offering sacrifice to the serpent folk's gods, and then he ordered them arrested and executed. But he had no idea how deep the contagion had spread. Many soldiers refused to follow his orders. The group stood facing each other, swords bared, loyalists against traitors. I should stand by my commanding officer, die beside him, as a loyal soldier of the Empire, but I'm scared. Oh, son, I'm scared. I don't want to die here, underground. I want to see my wife and son again. I couldn't say a single word. I couldn't even move while they butchered our commanding officer and the soldiers who remained loyal to him. But that couldn't save me from what happened next. They declared the, sa the slain as sacrifices to the serpent folk gods, and each of us had to taste the flesh of the sacrificed or share their fate. Salty blood runs down my lips. I choke down slimy meat and clap my hands to my mouth to keep myself from puking. Sun and moon can't help us here, and I, I raise my prayer to new gods. My legs won't hold me, so I kneel. And I feel them. I feel they're here with me. They stand around, their cold palms on my forehead, and my fear subsides. I'll return home. Isn't that what I was praying for? Won't you end up executed for treason? Not if they never learn of it. We all agreed that the story we'd tell our commanders when we returned. Our operation was successful. The Legion suffered heavy losses. The commanding officer was killed in action. So... The next in command took his place and ordered us to head back. We did, that is all. Did you sacrifice the other Cyclops? Just once or twice, uh, now we try to sac capture Serpent Polk alive and sacrifice them instead. I've even developed a taste for snake meat. The underground gods turned away from the, from the scum. Their new followers are far superior. Such power and glory in these new gods can bring to the Empire. We could even challenge Aslant himself. On the upper levels, we rejoined the main force of our army. We reported the cleansing operation as, as a success. No one doubted our story of the officer's glorious death. Not that I'm surprised. It seems our legion wasn't the only one to accept the protection of the underground gods. Some soldiers even pray to them openly, and our superiors turn a blind eye to it. Finally, we make it back to the surface. I breathe fresh air deep into my lungs. Like a crimson eye, the huge ball of light glares down upon me from the sky. I shut my eye, for I am no longer used to the sunlight. Tears run down my face. No matter, it's alright, I'll be home soon. I must thank the gods for my safe return. Maybe my son would make a good sacrifice. What happened to Golgon after that? As so it happens, while the serpent folk have lost the war to the Cyclopses, they won victory over their souls. Soon, dark cults spread throughout Golgon Empire, replacing the traditional worship of celestial deities. Sacrifice of Cyclopses, public torture, and ritual cannibalism became commonplace. The Empire began to decay. How was Corallon founded? Seeing the Empire dying, some Cyclopses fled to what is now known as Eobaria. Uh, they hoped to preserve the culture of Golgon, to build a new country free of the dark cults, but as before, the contagion was already too deep. 
Orlon proved to be just a lesser copy of Golgon, and then the Earthfall came. Skies have fallen down, ending the Cyclops' civilization along with so many others. Thanks. Yeah, that was awesome. Alright, I'm gonna keep the horse stuff. Where was the horse stuff from? Hunting Grounds, Goblin Fort, Lonely Barrow, Bridge Over Golden River. Okay. I'd like to see if I can get that other one. Not that I care. We'll talk with Jubilist about this real quick. I've never properly thanked you for your help with the inconsequent debates. I'm happy to do so now. Uh, I hope you don't think me entirely ungrateful. Uh, have you figured anything out about that riddle? Not quite, but I'm working on it. I'll certainly inform you when I uh, of my findings. I must admit, such an answer is quite in the spirit of the Fae. They must lead somewhere, and I will find the trail. I was surprised that you didn't want to be freed of the spell. Why did you willing really suffer? Well, you see, I understand well what the bleaching is, what a fatal effect it had on gnomes. The poor fellows were acting like that for no darker motive than desperation. Their foolish jokes allowed them to live a little bit longer, do you see? I don't mind becoming the joke myself for a while, of course, and not if my life was being threatened. Uh, and let someone live a couple of days longer. So you let them continue their prank to help them? It's a worthy act. Go to the dungeon with Varn. Oh, there's so much stuff to do. 81 days for the Ancient Curse. I kind of want to deal with the Varn hold.
So how does one teleport? Also, Candlemere Tower. We're gonna need to do something about that too. Look on any city I'm currently in. And a list of destinations will appear. Wait, like through here maybe? Mage Towers must not be built. Four, uh, 11 days, okay. 11 days! I think we should do Candlemere first. I get the feeling there's probably a time limit on that. Alright, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop here for tonight, everybody.